Hey Thunkers, this is Simran from Thunkable and welcome to the Advanced App Tutorial Series. These tutorials will focus on building advanced features and using more technical components. To get started, we're going to begin with how to use the Web API component. Now, Web APIs can be a little tricky at first, but that's okay. After this video, you'll learn all the basics of the Web API component. So, what is an API? API stands for Application Programming Interface, and it allows your app and a data source to talk to each other. Now, the Web API component allows you to get data from any public or private data source on the web. To make it a little easier, you can think of it as going to a restaurant and being given a menu card. You can then pick something off the menu, and shortly it will be served to you. That's exactly what using the Web API is like. You have a database and you can specify what parts of the data you want to use in your app. In computer science, these functionalities are also called endpoints. In the description box below, we've included a link to examples of web APIs, including data sources like YouTube, Yelp, or the weather. To use most public APIs, you will probably be required to sign up on a website and get an API key. Now, an API key is just a unique code that the website gives you. You can think about it this way. Most websites keep their data locked in a house. You can request an API key, which can unlock the door and get information for you to use in your app. All websites are different, but getting a unique API key will probably require you to sign up. You can enter a company name, and you can just make this up if you're just building an app for yourself. After signing up, most websites will just give you the API key. After getting the API key, you will need the database URL. Now, what's that? A database URL is kind of like a street address. The URL tells you the location of the data. Usually, you can find the URL address on the same page where you got the API key. In the next few tutorials, we'll be showing you how to do this. For now, just know that these are the different terms and the things that you will need. After you have the database URL, you'll need to paste this in your blocks. Now, this looks different for every app depending on the information you're asking the website for. On the docs, which are linked in the description box below, you'll find a list of the different types of data items that you can potentially use in your app. Again, this will change depending on the information that you're requesting from the website. The way you start receiving data is by adding specific endings to the URL. Now, these endings have a very specific format that software engineers use, and usually it's ampersand followed by the name of the data that you want. Now, the next step is really important. The name of the data that you want has to be written exactly the same way it appears on the docs or in the sample code that's shown on the docs. Again, in the next videos, we'll be showing you examples of this. Now you want to store the information that you got from the website and use it in your app. You can do this by using the call get block from the web API drawer. The web API component is made up of response, status, and error but you really only need to worry about response right now because that's where all the data that you receive from the website is stored. So at this point, you'll have all the data that you need, but before you can use it, you need to change its format. The format that the data comes in from the website is in JSON format. Now, what does that mean? JSON stands for JavaScript Object Notation. Basically, the code is in a specific format, and for our app to understand it, we need to change it into another format. Think of it as translation. JSON is the language that the website uses, and you need to translate it into a language that your app can read. This process of changing the code format is a computer science term that's called parsing data. So we'll be taking this code that's in JSON format and changing it into another format called object format. Now doing this is quite simple. You'll need the blocks in the object drawer. So as an example, let's take a look at this block over here. With these blocks, we're using the Open Weather Map database to try to get the current temperature in a city. In Open Weather Map's documentation, their code shows that you need to first go into the main information and then get the temp information from that. So just as an example, this is the documentation for the Open Weather Map. And you can see here, this is what JSON code looks like. So we took the temperature information, temp, from the main code block. So the response block has all the information, in this case, the temperature that we got from the website, and it's in JSON format. 
by using this combination of blocks, we're converting the information that came as JSON format into object format so that our app can understand it. And that's pretty much it. At this point, you can start using the information that you got from the database within your app. To see how this all really works, you can check out the tutorials in the Web API series where you'll learn how to make a restaurant suggestion app using the Yelp database or a weather map using the Open Weather Map database. Awesome, so you now know how the Web API component works and you can build some really cool apps with this. Remember that in the description box below, we have a link to the different Web APIs that you can use. And I encourage you to check that out so you can build apps using different company databases. We will be creating more API tutorials for you, and I'm excited to see what you build. So thanks for thunking.